No one likes losing $200 to $500 every single day. That's exactly what's happening right now by not making a move in buying real estate in the right markets. I wanna break down in this video what's happening around the grounds, but more importantly, why it's never been easier than right now to purchase real estate in Australia and why the time is actually running out. If you're interested in what my thoughts are, definitely keep watching. Hey guys, my name's Ravi and welcome back to Personal Finance with Ravi Sharma. If you're new here, smash that subscribe button because I talk about real estate, cryptocurrency and financial freedom. Now when I did the numbers, it actually blew my mind to understand what's happening out there. Now I'll give you an example. Sydney being the largest, most expensive market in Australia has a median value of about $1.1 million. Now over the past 12 months, according to PropTrack, the median house value has gone up by 6.1%. This is despite all the concerns around affordability, all the concerns around housing, and all the concerns around interest rates being elevated. Now this is a mixture between houses and units. If you were just looking at houses, the median's closer to about $1.5 to $1.6 million. Now again, that's Sydney in general. In the suburbs around you, those numbers might be higher or might be lower. Now, when you think about those numbers, you're like 6% or 1.1 million. Yeah, like who really cares? Well, if you actually break it down per week and per day, this is where it gets scary. Because every day you put off from sending your docs to your mortgage broker or booking in that call with Ravi Sharma or search property to actually go out there and execute, you're actually losing a lot of money. And I'm not just talking about a cup of coffee a day. I'm talking about money that's significant. If you looked at Sydney's example, that would be $185 per day. And if you just said, hey, well, I'm on holidays, I don't really wanna think about this, one week is costing you 1,300 per week. Now we complain when our rent goes up by 150 or 200 bucks a week, yet we're okay losing 1,300 per week. Now that's just Sydney, and yes, Sydney's really expensive. So if we decided to look at another market where the numbers do make sense, or definitely did about 24 months ago, I'm talking about Perth. If you looked at the numbers there, it's actually quite scary to think how people have missed out on one of the greatest opportunities to build wealth with real estate. Perth's median value over the last 12 months is up 23%. Definitely not normal, but it's playing the catch up in this phase of the cycle. Exactly what we were talking about on this channel about three years ago. Now the median value is about $750,000. And so that means over the last 12 months, it's roughly about 150 dollars to $170,000 worth of growth. So if you just purchased a property there, and yes, it would be pending on the fact that it was in the right area, didn't have issues when it comes to bushfires and things like that, that would mean that you made about 3,200 per week. Most people will not even be able to save that with two people working in their own house. And that would equate to $450 per day. I don't know about you, but I would love to see my portfolio go up by $450 per day, especially when getting into property there was a lot easier 12 months ago and all you really needed was about $70,000. So on a return of $70,000, you're making almost 500 bucks a day. That's a good deal to me. Now, will this continue? Nobody really knows. But what I'm here to say is that it definitely doesn't get easier. It's the easiest it'll ever be. And I know that people will say, oh, well, it's affordability is the concern, Ravi. No one can afford for real estate prices to keep going higher. Well, I'm gonna challenge that thought. And I'm gonna get you to think about something differently. And I think when it changes your perspective, it's gonna change the way you think about investing and investing with speed. Now, when it comes to affordability concerns in Australia, there's nothing that's changed really. It's just the new generation then complain and say that the previous generation are the ones who cooked it and now it's really difficult. And that's exactly what's happened time and time again. And I'll use my example. Now I look at today and I speak to a lot of you guys that contact me and book in sessions and I talk to my team. And what we've realized is people are still going through the same things that I went through 11 years ago. When I had to go and purchase my first property, I was born in Sydney and I had intentions to live here for the rest of my life. I wanted to buy real estate in Sydney. And when I looked at the prices versus what I was making, I'm like, it's too expensive. The only thing I can afford is probably a unit or a house that's quite far and it might be in a really bad condition. I don't wanna go through that, let me look at alternative markets. So at that point, I went and bought a property in regional New South Wales. Now, if you want a video of how I went about buying my first investment property, definitely leave me a comment down below saying first property with Ravi and I'll make that one for you guys as well. But that now I'm talking about is 11 years ago. I had those issues. Now, what's even crazier is my parents moved here about 45 to 50 years ago into Australia. They migrated here and they went through the typical migrant story, which is things were really difficult. I had to save every dollar I made, 
but at the same time, there was usually one parent working and one parent at home. So that's definitely a change from what we are seeing today because most couples are both working. Now, when I've spoken to them about that story, I've asked them, what was it like buying real estate back then? Because to be honest, you should have just bought in Bondi and we would have been really rich now. And they said, well, it was actually really expensive. In fact, where we ended up buying, which was in Southwest of Sydney, it was actually really expensive at the time. And because my mom was taking care of my brother and I, my dad was working three jobs. And I'm not even kidding. Like it wasn't even those stories like I walked for five kilometers just to get to school. My dad dropped out of school, was working really hard. They got married really young. And then mum was taking care of us while dad was working a full-time job. He would work a job on the weekends and then he would do night fill at Woolies as well, which is actually incredible and hats off to him. But the reality is even back then, it was hard to buy real estate. It was impossible to buy a house anywhere close to the city. So they ended up buying a house. It was like three or four families living in the same home. I think at one point there was 12 family members living in a house, which was actually a four bedroom house with one bathroom, like 12 people, one bathroom. Shit's wild. Do you get it? Now, the reason I bring up that story is because there are similar stories right now happening around all of Australia. We have so many migrants coming to Australia and people often think, why do we have so many migrants coming into the country? And it's not just because we say, hey, come into our country, look at us. It's actually because Australia is a safe haven and it's a very desirable area, especially for people wanting to grow their families. So that's why so many people want to move into Australia. Now, believe it or not, Australia is actually quite young. It's an emerging market. And when you compare markets like Sydney to London or the United States, Miami, Los Angeles, it gives you a lot of perspective as to how bad things are actually overseas compared to here. And what we need to look at is the price affordability index. So let's have a look and compare it to Australia. So we're here looking at price index by country 2024 mid year. And this is just price to income ratio. There's a lot of colors here and it's probably not gonna to make too much sense. But if we looked at something like Australia, it says that the price to income ratio is 8.41, which means your income multiplied by 8.41 is what you would need to be able to get into the property market. Now, if you looked at other areas and you looked at say the United States, it's coming in at 3.32. But what's really skewed here is that the market is so big there. And if you looked at specific areas like LA, it would be very different to other areas that are less desirable. You go up here and look at Canada, which obviously on the map looks huge. That's at 10.39, a market that's very similar to Australia because it does have appeal when it comes to migration as well. Now, what I wanna do is scroll down here and just see where Australia is in the pecking order. You can see the price to income ratio in certain areas where maybe there's a lot of dodgy stuff going on, but I wanna to go to more established markets. We can see China at 29.4. We can see something like Singapore at 18.7. We can see Russia at 16, and we're still so far away from Australia's 8.41. You keep going down, you can see a lot of areas in Europe. You've got Japan at 11.3. You've got Canada at 10.4, Germany at 9.4, New Zealand at 8.8, .8, and then we come in at 84th position at 8.4. That just gives you a perspective of how young our country is, but also how different it is when you do go overseas. Now, although housing affordability has always been a concern, let's have a look at how bad it actually is right now. And this is gonna feed into this whole narrative of why I believe now is the easiest time to get in. And yes, it would have been easier 12 months ago, but I don't think it's gonna be easier in 12 months from now which is why you need to move at speed and you need to start actioning that knowledge that you have. Now, housing affordability has hit its worst level in three decades. Surging home prices throughout the pandemic and rapidly rising interest rates over the past year have brought housing affordability to its lowest level in at least three decades. The PropTrack Housing Affordability Index shows that by June 2023, households across the income distribution could afford the smallest share of homes since 1995 when our records began. And you can see that clearly here, we've just been on a complete downtrend. Although from the period of the GFC up until about the pandemic, we did see housing affordability stabilize, but now we're at those levels again. When you look at housing affordability by state 2022 to 2023, the higher the number, the better it is. You can see Western Australia is still in that lead. However, if you look at the updated numbers, you're probably gonna see this closer to about 50% rather than that 75%, but it still is the highest. When you compare that to New South Wales, we're close to 25%, and that brings the average across Australia to just under 50%. Now, a large reason as to why it is so difficult is with interest rates being where they're at, 
housing prices where they're at, you're actually having to pay a lot more when it comes to interest repayments and mortgage repayments in general. And you can see that in this graph. We peaked in 1990, we sort of peaked just before the GFC, and now we're just on a rapid rise up the top. Now what you will also know is that around these peaks, we did have a recession in the economy. Now that doesn't mean that prices just fell off a cliff. It did, however, mean that we did have interest rates come down. So it's all sort of lining up where you pretty much have two to three years to go in this property cycle where interest rates will fall and then you have a bunch of people that have been sidelined come in to try and buy property. Now, it may be the top in two years or three years or four years, but the plan is that if you are going to go down that path, you need to know what your budget looks like. You need to know if you've got an emergency fund so you can protect your downside, which is always the key. I don't know about you, but I would much rather be in the market than out the market. If you look at historical data, there are always gonna be periods where there's growth and there's gonna be declines. And when you actually put that on a graph, you'll find that the declining years are usually one to two years out of every 10 year block. So that's why we always talk about time in the market is better than timing the market. Because chances are you're gonna be hit by two or three years of declining value. But the reason why you stick it through those times is because you then have eight to nine years of rapid growth. Now there's experts already predicting that Sydney house prices could reach the $2 million median value in two years time. And then when it comes to affordability, you're looking at units and you're looking at houses. And when you look at that and you factor in how the growth has actually been, you can see it clearly in this graph where houses have outperformed units. However, units have still gone up by 3x over that 30 year period. Now I know it's such a hard truth to hear that hey, housing is gonna get more expensive. I could have bought a property say three years ago, but now I'm priced out of the market. The reality is it doesn't get easier than this. And yes, we're gonna have ebbs and flows. We may have some years where prices stabilize and even decline a little bit. The reality is it'll always get harder. And with Australia being so attractive for migrants, I don't think the Australian government's gonna just turn off that tap with the rising construction costs to build a new home as well, making it so difficult to get supply to the levels they need to be when it comes to meet demand, it really does point to higher house prices. Now I think the reality is over the next 15 to 20 years, you going out there to buy a house would be an absolute luxury because it's gonna be so far above our means to be able to go and service a loan, let alone get the deposit to buy that actual house. If we see house prices go up by 3X or 4X, you're looking at five to $7 million when it comes to buying a house. Now I know that sounds wild, but when you think about the story I've told you in the beginning of my story buying 11 years ago, and then you think about my parents' story about 45 to 50 years ago, it's the same thing, except the stakes get even higher. And a classic example of this is when you break down Sydney in general. When you look at the house prices in some areas of the West, you're like, yeah, $1.5, $2 million. Okay, I can probably just get in. It's still within reach. But then you think about Point Piper and you're like, that's $50 million, I can't afford that. And that is what I think the world is heading towards. I think when people think about houses in Australia, it's gonna be thought about like Point Piper because it is so far outside of our reach rather than thinking it's almost still there. If you're in the position where you can still buy land in Australia, being a house in a good area where the numbers make sense, I urge you to take that action. Now, if you wanna go and do it yourself, you've gotta factor in that it's probably gonna take you about three months to get in. Now, what's really interesting is that 62% of the people that did a survey by mortgage choice found that they had to go get multiple pre-approvals because a pre-approval usually lasts about three months. And that tells you that people weren't able to find the house they wanted within those three months, which means every three months you would have to go and put in your docs, hope that you can get a loan because interest rates have gone up or the banks have changed their rules and then just pray to God that the market hasn't left you behind. I've spoken to two people only yesterday and they told me that they could have bought a house but they didn't because they were scared and now they're priced out. I don't tell you these things to scare you but the reality is the houses are becoming even smaller and if you have the idea of home ownership then you have a couple of ways you can do it. You can go and get yourself stuck into just buying anything just for the sake of owning something or be strategic about it. Buy in the right locations, have the right mentor or strategist on your side to be able to navigate through this and get further ahead. Because if you do what average people do, then unfortunately the average person will not be able to own a home in Australia, let alone in Sydney. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know sometimes the truth can hurt, but if you need help, please reach out and we've grown our team to help more of you out there. So definitely book in a call. The calendar does get booked out, so don't delay. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks guys.